Hey guys, this is Mark from Osseoholic again. Um, today I'm here for you with something different. Um, we used to do quite a few unboxing videos in the past, but uh, since we have our CPU gaming performance articles, which you guys appear to be very interested, judging by the, the reader numbers we have in those, uh, I thought it would, have, it would be a good idea to, to walk you through these in, in a series of videos. So this is actually the first video on our CPU gaming performance articles and I'm going to compare today uh, the Core i7-5960X, as you can see here, versus the i7-5820K. Uh, first of all, I'll show you the, the test setup, what we're using to what we're actually doing and what we're doing it on. Um, yeah, we're, in this case we're comparing two CPUs at stock clocks and overclocked to 4.5 GHz. Uh, we're also using, uh, we're doing that on an Asus Rampage 5 Extreme motherboard. Uh, we're using G-Skill Rigtures 4 DDR4 3000 memory with the latency set at 1515 1535 and there is an Asus Trix OC edition GeForce GDX 980 graphics card um, as well as Windows 7 latest drivers and when it comes to games uh, we're using uh, Borderlands, the pre-sequel, Battlefield 4, Watch Dogs, Tomb Raider, Sniper D3, Crisis 3, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, Thief, Grid Autosport, Sleeping Dogs, Metro Last Light, Assassin's Creed Unity as well as Far Cry 4. Um, everything is installed on an OCZ ARC 100-240GB drive and in the case of the power supply we're using a Seasonic Platinum 1000 watts. So, let's jump to the results we gathered in Firestrike. We're also testing three different resolutions which is like a Full HD, a 1440p and UHD. Um, for all resolutions we're testing very high details, so we're maxing out anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering um, as well as all the other settings we can find, we just simply simply max that. This makes, uh, this makes the testing procedure uh, a little bit easier in the end and also we really want to show what uh, yeah, these systems can do when they they're really loaded with the absolute maximum you can you can you can re you can actually hit them today. Um, yeah, let's have a look at uh, uh, 1080p. So here we see that the 5820K at stock clocks um, is about three percent faster, or in other words, the 5960X is about 3.5% faster than the 5820K when both CPUs are at stock clocks. Uh, when the CPUs are overclocked to 4.5 GHz, the 5960X is about 5% quicker than the 5820K. And this already gives you guys like a, a, a glance at the, at the entire, at, at the rest of the article, because the difference is that they're always kind of like in the it's very rarely the case that, uh, that the performance difference are double digit percentages. So um, when you compare two CPUs in, in systems, when you run high resolutions and details maxed out, then it's actually not the CPU limiting performance in your system, it will always be the graphics card. So basically we see kind of like the same in, uh, with our 1440p preset. The differences are actually even a little bit smaller. You can see that uh, 5960X, uh, no, they're, they're tiny little bit bigger in, in this case, pulls away by 4.07% uh, compared to the 5820K at stop locks. And yeah, overclocked to 4.5 GHz, the difference um, yeah, is again like 4.56% when compared to the 5820K at stock clocks. So even, even overclocking a CPU or a more powerful CPU to 4.5 GHz and having the other CPU at uh, stock clocks doesn't make the higher end CPU pull away in games. Um, at UHD uh, the differences are a little bit bigger. The, 
comparing the 5960X overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz uh, to the 5820K at stop clocks, we see 8.9% difference. And that is that is actually I mean eight to nine percent to ten percent. That is actually something you kind of like see in the frame rates in the end. But it's it's not really going to be a huge difference that games that have not been playable before become playable after you you overclock your CPU or you went for a much more expensive processor. Um, basically, the situation in uh, uh, in Uni Unigine Heaven is. Uh, is, is kind of like the same, differences are even smaller um, which is why we go to the next benchmark and then we have Borderlands, the pre-sequel what's interesting with this benchmark is that uh, it's not that demanding on the graphics and usually it is the case that if a benchmark or a game is less demanding on the graphics cards then it's not the graphics cards limiting or bottlenecking the performance then the CPU has a higher influence on, on, the, on, on the scaling of the values but even with, uh, yeah, with Borderlands this is not the case so the, we still have a single digit uh, percentage differences with uh, the different CPUs and, uh, and the different clock speeds we've, we've chosen a closer look at Battlefield 4 shows this is one of the more interesting games to have a look at. Here it really appears that uh, some optimization has to be, must have been done in towards uh, multi-threaded processors because you can clearly see that uh, the 5960X with at 4.5 gigahertz pulls away from the 5820K at stop clocks by 15.6%. That's actually quite a difference. And with the 1440p preset, we see that the 5960X at 4.5 uh, pulls away by 20%, and in Ultra HD, the difference is actually 31%, which, um, yeah, 31%, that is actually a significant difference. And that, yeah does make for, for quite an improvement. What's also interesting to see here is that actually overclocking the CPU helps. Uh, just by overclocking the 5820K to 4.5 GHz performance goes up by 16%. And in frame rates, or the average frame rates, they shoot up from 34.62 to 40 FPS, which is also quite a nice bump. And in the case of the 5960X overclocked, we see 45.59 FPS. So that really is a significant difference. Um, yeah, Watch Dogs is also one of the more demanding games. It's also one of the latest uh, later games that have been published. Um, again, we basically see kind of like the same that we saw also with Battlefield 4. Um, especially the 5960X overclocked to 4.5 GHz um, can score some significant differences. At 1080p, uh, difference to the stock 5820K is 26.6%, uh, 1440p 15.38% and at UHD we see 22.57%. Um, especially at Full HD, overclocking the CPU to 4.5 GHz shows uh, quite a difference as well, which uh, where it is 20.9%. So, yeah, I could go through all the all the benchmarks like, like this, but uh, then the article, would, it would take like ages until I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. So if you guys really want to see all the results in detail, make sure to check out our review. And I will now jump to the uh, power consumption tests, which are also quite interesting to, to have a look at. Um, here you see also again 5820K at stock and at 4.5 GHz, then 5960X at stock as well as 4.5 GHz in idle. Um, the idle system, we took the, the 5820K through the entire review as our baseline with 100% and then you see when we overclock this platform 
then the, the, the power cell consumption goes up from 68 to 106 watts, which is actually really, really a difference of 55.88%. And uh, just comparing the platforms or having a, a 5820K on our Rampage 5 Extreme and then switching to a 5960X, we see that uh, the platform draws 92 watts which is 35% more than what it does with a 5820K in the socket. And overclocking the 5960X to 4.5 GHz makes power consumption go up by 85.29% compared to the, uh, the platform with 5820K stock in the socket. Um, apparently putting, putting load on the system, putting load on the system with full mark, so basically this means uh, loading the graphics cards, the, the CPU differences, um, they, have, they have lesser, a smaller impact on the, on the overall power consumption in the end. So here we see that comparing the 5820 stock to the 5960X at 4.5 gigahertz, uh, wattage goes up from 3.54 to 4.16 or in other words 17.5%. Um, yeah, as I said, the power consumption is going to, to increase significantly if you overclock your, your system. So yeah, you should really think about if it's actually worth burning all that additional power to get uh, uh, yeah, a few more percent in performance. Uh, what we also always do is a performance index where you have a, a brief overview uh, on the, the results averaged. We average only the results gathered in games. Um, yeah, comparing again at 1080p the, the, the two most extreme values uh, 5820k stock versus 5960x stock is 9.43% difference. At 1440p it's 8.75 and at QHD it's 12.21%. This is actually a double digit difference. So yeah, you do gain quite a bit of performance. Then let's have a quick look at the price. Uh, you see that uh, the 5820K today costs uh, 392 euros. In the US it's kind of like similar in US dollars, I guess like $380. And uh, the 5960X these days goes for 1056 euros and also I guess in the US it's about a grand in dollars. So this, the, the 5960X is about 2.5 times more expensive but for that you really don't get like 2.5 times more gaming performance. Um, in our conclusion we actually do a quick summary basically I'm, I'm saying or we we're wrapping up exactly what I've just been saying throughout this uh, this video uh, we look at full HD performance 40 40p, 40p performance and UHD performance as well as uh, power consumption and we give uh, a recommendation uh, apparently you can switch these lang these articles into different languages it's now in, in English so, and uh, the overall conclusion of this article is, is basically, I mean, paying two and a half times more for a CPU and getting on average like up to 12% more performance is not really worth the money. Uh, you actually want to buy a 5960X when you, when you do desktop publishing, when you, when you, or if you do like video editing and stuff like this, a 3D rendering, then you really see a, a significant performance boost and these programs and this software, it really scales well with the multi-threaded architecture these CPUs offer, or especially the 5960X since it, com since it comes with 8 cores and 16 threads compared to 6 cores and 12 threads with a 50 a20k so in the case of games as i already said it's a uh, like almost always the graphics card which is limiting or bottlenecking performance and uh, yeah therefore if you do have the funds to go for an absolute high-end processor then feel free you will see some benefit but don't expect it to like uh, uh, yeah, make the, the, the world turn faster. 
So I hope you enjoy this video and uh, don't forget to, to hit the like button and subscribe and see you next time guys. Bye bye.